In the name of the living God, who is creator, Christ, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, you probably know this, that the, the collect of the day is a collection of ideas that, or the, 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 that forms a theme of that Sunday, or that day, or that event. So it's a very important, it's important, very important statement right up at the beginning of the liturgy to say, okay, folks, this is what we're focusing on today. And the collect of the day, I just want to repeat a little bit of it. Come quickly to help us who are assaulted by many temptations. I mean, come quickly. It sounds like you know an emergency. Come quickly to help us who are assaulted by many temptations throughout the day, all kinds of temptations. And as you know the weaknesses of each of us, God does know that. You can try to hide them from God, but it's useless. God knows who we are, both our pluses and our minuses. As you know the many weaknesses of each of us, let each one find you mighty to save. The punchline is, God, come quickly and save us. Bring peace and truth into our lives. So, for seven days, about a week ago, I went on a personal pilgrimage. Um, uh, since turning 70, I went back to the place where I was born and the church in which I was ordained and the churches I served and all the houses I lived in, the homes I lived in. And uh, it was a fascinating experience. I mean, so many memories. And some of those I treasure, and some of those I'd give anything if I could forget. <laughs> but one of them, one of those memories actually has to do with this season of Lent. And it happened when I was 11 or 12 years old, and my friends and I were walking home from school, and we'd go by this little grocery store, this little neighborhood grocery store called uh, Bristow's M Grocery. And we'd always go in there and get something and eat it while we're walking home or go play baseball or something. And I remember, I remember somehow we started talking about church. I don't know why. I don't know how we got off on that. But all of a sudden, one of my good friends who was, who was right here to my left, well, let me back up one minute. I mean, what we would get, what we get often was a, a Pepsi Cola. A Pepsi Cola. By the way, do you know, do you know what word uh, uses the same letters in Pepsi Cola? There's another word that uses the very same letters in Pepsi Cola. Do you know what that word is? This is really deep, really deep. <laughs> Episcopal. Yeah, 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 Episcopal. And, uh, and it just so happens that Pepsi Cola was, uh, was discovered, was invented by a chemist in Newburn, North Carolina, and um, it was right across the street from the Episcopal Church. Now, I don't know whether he, I don't know how it happened, but isn't that weird? Anyway, so what we would do after we would stop at this grocery store is often we'd get a Pepsi Cola and drink a little bit of it and then get uh, a bag of, a little bag of peanuts and then pour the peanuts in the Pepsi Cola. <laughs> and did you ever, this is crazy. I don't know why we did that. I don't know why we did it, but that's what we did. But my friend, my friend didn't do that. Instead, he, he had a Snickers bar. So there we were walking down the street, and, um, and we were all eating and talking. And all of a sudden, he stops and spits out on the sidewalk this Snickers bar. I said, Billy, what are you doing? He said, I gave up candy for Lent. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, he was not an Episcopalian. He was a good Roman Catholic. So he was really, really serious about getting that candy out of his mouth. What a waste of a good Snickers bar. <laughs> But Lent, you know, even though, even though it might be helpful to give something up, maybe that's something that gets us to a place of making more space for God in our lives. But, but what this colleague says is that Lent is not so much about saying no to something as it is about saying yes to God. I mean, ultimately, that's what we're called to do, right? We are disciples of Jesus Christ. That means we are saying yes to following and learning from Jesus Christ. We are believers in God, so that means that what we, knew, what we want to do is to go deeper and deeper into that faith. It's a lifelong journey. 
but we want to say yes and yes and yes again to going deeper into that faith in God. The triune God, God the Creator, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit. And Lent is a great time, you know, it, it, you, we could set it aside as saying, even though we like to do this every day, but it's a, it's a season when we really want to push the envelope a little bit and really, really go deeper. Another reason is that if, you, if you're just going like, to, like, like my friend, give up candy for Lent, I mean, when Easter Day comes, you can say, thank goodness, that's over, now I can eat candy. But if you do, if, instead of doing that, Instead, if you take on something new that's doable, that really does have an effect on you and maybe changes the way you honor and live into your relationship with God, well, that might continue after Lent. What a fantastic thing. What a fantastic thing. Well, that's what this gospel is about, too. Now, even the Genesis story and the Gospel story, you might see it as a, as a conflict, you know, between, in the Genesis story, who was wrong? I mean, the serpent, the woman, the man, you know, but that's, that's really missing the point. The point is, they didn't say yes to God. That's the point. And in, in the Gospel, you know, it's the same kind of thing. You could say, okay, this is a battle between the devil and Jesus Christ. Who's going to win here, you know? Who's going to, how, what the, how? But it really was not so much, because you could see that, that Jesus really deflected every time. And what did he do? I mean, he did not take the bait. He was not tempted. He was tempted, but he didn't go there. Instead, he said yes to God again and again. The devil says, hey, what about unlimited prosperity? Why don't you go ahead and turn these stones into food? I mean, think what good that would do in the world. It would, it would solve hunger. But Jesus says, no, no. I'm going to live on God's word. Or what about, why don't you go ahead and throw yourself down and prove to me that you're the son of God and that you'll be protected? because you are privileged or you have this extra protection. And God says no. Jesus says no. I don't need to do that. I'm going to say yes to God. Or what about the last one is that if you bow down to me, the devil says, all the power in the world is yours, is yours. Jesus says no. I'm sticking with God. A dramatic story, but remember, if we're disciples of Jesus, what we're called to do is do what Jesus does. Not be Jesus, but take steps and do relate to God as Jesus does, and, and that's the message for us here. Now, aren't we tempted every day? I mean, in a thousand different small ways, or maybe even some big ways. We're tempted to do something we know is not the right thing, but there it is. Sometimes we do do the wrong thing. And then we have to ask for forgiveness, or we have to change our ways. But what if, what if we found a way to be deeper into that faith in God that maybe we didn't have to struggle with the temptation so much because we were more rooted in the faith? Here's something I want to ask you to do. Not to give up anything. You can do that too. Whatever works, whatever works to help you move deeper, that's, that's fine. But I want you to say yes more to God every day. And here's something you could do. Either at the beginning of the day or the end of the day or whenever you want to throughout the day, you can say this sentence. God, I now put my whole trust in you. What did that take? 15, 15 seconds. 15 seconds. I mean, just, you could be at home, you could be here, you could, you could do it right now. God, I now put all my trust in you. And then you just be still for another 45 seconds. And then go about your business. 
But whenever you think about it, wherever you are, say that. You're not promising to do it all day. You're not even promising to do it for 30 minutes. God, I now, in this one little minute, in this safe place, God, I now put all my trust in you. And here's what happens. The more you say it, the more it is true. You know, we end up convincing ourselves. It's a good thing to be convinced of. God, I now put all my trust in you. We know that that's the message and that's the reality that Jesus will live throughout this season and Holy Week to his to ultimate death. Jesus put all his trust in God. And here we sit as a result in gratitude. So eat all the candy you want to, unless you have a reason not to. But please, do something to go deeper into that faith journey. Every year is important and every day is important. And tell God, God, now I put my whole trust in you. Amen.